The Edge of Forever comes from an episode of uh, Cosmos by Carl Sagan, so it's one of the episode titles, where he's trying to explain the sort of expansion of the universe and, you know, if the universe is made of matter, what's outside of that matter, which, again, as when I was young, was something that completely just, you know, couldn't grasp <laughs> at all. And um, so a lot of the work in the exhibition is... Uh, influenced by Carl Sagan and my kind of weird obsession with him. I started with painting like terrestrial clouds and I had always wanted to move it on to like space because I think that's a more interesting subject. From going from the monotone to colour it was kind of like I've ruminated about it quite a lot because I am a bit colour averse. And then unfortunately my nana died and uh, for whatever reason that prompted me to like just do it just have a go and like get started with the project really and again it all seems a bit uh serendipitous but also a bit cheesy but like I'm not religious so you know death's kind of like a weird thing to sort of come to terms with if you're not religious but energy doesn't die so it seemed like the right moment to start exploring this sort of uh, aspect of my painting but also yeah my love of science and yeah space having it at Edinburgh with the links to Leicester University obviously and Leicester University has pretty much had some sort of instrument on every sort of uh, Mars rover um, you know probe going out to asteroids you know, Leicester has had, or Leicester University has had a hand in that somehow, whether it's, you know, making a little piece of the uh, robotics or, you know, uh, analysing the data. So I've been, or tried to be quite ambitious with sort of scale, trying to sort of um, encase that sense of wonder, um, because I think that's really important to experience. And I'm not saying, like, people will stand in front of my work and be like, wow, but, like... Um, I hope there is that sort of sense of, oh, I want to find out more about these subjects or why we are the way we are or anything like that. I think, you know, art can be a really useful vehicle for that. I had this idea ages ago about, like, what are we as humans? And in my mind, it's our consciousness, which makes us us as individuals, but also as a, as a whole, as a humanity. And um, so picking the brain to use as like a starting point and then to overlay it with the sort of imagined nebula gives a nod to that, like we are made of star stuff, but also the whole thing of we are the universe experiencing itself. So this is with a great artist called Daniela De Paulis. Um, she's been uh, using this method for you know, over a decade. It has, uh, the radio signal has to penetrate the uh, moon's surface about three metres and um, until it hits something hard enough to be able to reflect back. And, uh, and then it heats the entire surface of the moon and then it bounces back. And depending on the terrain that at the point where it hit the moon and also all the background radiation from the sun or the Big Bang or, you know, our own uh, earthly telecommunications. It scrambles the signal, basically, and it comes back really distorted and, like, glitched. And again, that sort of... that conversation between wanting to know something and you have to decipher it, you have to sort of um, figure out the puzzle kind of thing when I was painting like terrestrial clouds I'd use the golden ratio on top of that which is like a u mathematical universal constant throughout the universe so you know and everybody would say that maths is the language of the universe you know to add the geometry over the top of these imagined nebulas you're almost like deciphering a language of what this clouds of information or matter or material sort of represents so because energy doesn't die, like it's just transformed or, you know, moved to somewhere else, 
there's also that can be linked to the molecules and uh, that are within us. So, you know, from a huge supernova on the other side of the Milky Way, you know, billions of years ago, and somehow ends up on Earth and could be in us right now as we speak, which is mind blowing. But then the oxygen that we breathe, you know, food we eat, like the natural cycles of the world, like we all share these molecules on a sort of daily basis. And there's, yeah, this theory that those molecules remember, like where they've been. So there is this sort of, yeah, humanity, cosmic connection with everything. We're humanity, we're not, you know, Europe and America and Russia or whatever. It's like, it's all the one thing. And people have completely, you know, don't even want to fathom this or give it any time of day, which is such a shame because imagine the things that we could be doing if we didn't bother ourselves with stupid shit like that. (laughs) 